I know that auto journalists are supposed to see cars a bit like parents see their children. You know, all equals, no favourites, that kind of thing. But I'm going to let you in on a tiny little secret. You see, I love this BMW M2 more than I love any other pint-sized performance car. In fact, I love this more than I love more expensive models in the M range. So come with me and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So let's start with the bad news. The M2 has only been getting more and more expensive over the years and this new generation model only continues that charge. Fun fact, when we first tested this vehicle way back in 2016, you get a pure with a manual transmission for under 90 grand or a full fruit M2 for under 100 grand. This model though, it lists at around 120 grand plus on road costs. So a slightly worse bang for your bucks proposition then, but there's still plenty of bang. You'll find staggered 19 and 20 inch lightweight alloys, while standard performance kit includes an active M differential, adaptive M suspension, M compound brakes, M sports seats up front, and for the first time, a lightweight M carbon roof. Elsewhere, there's adaptive LED headlights, a 12.3 inch instrument display, a 14.9 inch infotainment screen, a head up display, a Harman Kardon surround sound system, an Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You'll sit on leather seats that adjust electrically and which are heated up front, and there's three zone climate control, along with a heated steering wheel, wireless device charging, and ambient interior lighting. Now for the full skinny on what else you get, and importantly, what you don't, jump onto carsguide.com.au to read my full review. Now I know there's been mixed reviews around modern BMW design language, especially in the M range, but I gotta say, I think this one looks pretty good. I always think super aggressive design looks better on smaller cars than it does on bigger ones. And that's certainly the case here because look, really is aggressive, right? From these really swollen bonnet bulges to the blacked out grill and aero, the staggered alloys and these swollen rear haunches. And at the rear, you'll find a nice blocky rear end with four exhaust exits. But my favorite, my favorite exterior design element has to be this blacked out carbon roof. I just think it helps shrink the M2 visually on the road, but also just makes it look that little bit more potent. Now inside you'll find a fairly sporty feeling cabin with lots of this kind of carbon look everywhere and red controls on the steering wheel, even if some of the other touch points are a little less than premium feeling. Now that said, all the tech is certainly present and accounted for. I love this kind of giant twin screen setup and there's no shortage of ways to charge or connect your mobile. The M2 measures just over 4.5 meters in length, just under 1.9 meters in width, and just over 1.4 meters in height, and it rides on a 2,747 millimeter wheelbase. That makes it longer, wider, and lower than the model it replaces. Now the M2 is a two-door, four-seat vehicle, and that means the back seat is really more of an occasional solution rather than a full-time answer. It also means getting into them is a slightly uncomfortable affair. Push the seat back forward, the seat will slide forward automatically, and then you kind of serve to sellay yourself here into the back seat. Once here, you'll find it is a little snug indeed. Now remember I said this was lower than the vehicle it replaces. That's pretty much immediately obvious. I'm only 175 centimeters and my head is hitting the roof. There's not a lot in the way of legroom either, and it just feels a little snug and claustrophobic back here. As I said, this is really an occasional answer or something you might use for very young children because there are two isofix attachment points in each seat. Now, elsewhere back here, you've got vents and your own temperature controls, but really that's about it. Other than this pull down divider, which you might think would host cup holders, but instead just gives you access to the boot. Now, speaking of the boot, you'll find 390 litres of cargo room back there, which again isn't massive, but if you're buying the M2 because of its practicality perks or because you like doing runs to Bunnings, well, I hate to tell you, but you're doing it wrong. Open the M2's bonnet and not only will you find all this stiffening bracing, but you'll find one of the best engines in the business. This is a three litre twin turbocharged straight six. It makes 338 kilowatts and 550 Newton meters. Now BMW says that's enough to push the M2 to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.1 seconds and to take it from zero to 200 kilometers an hour in 13.5 seconds, provided you've got the automatic. There's a manual option as well, but it's slightly slower to the double ton. Now it sends its power to the rear wheels frankly, as it should. A small fly in the M2 ointment is fuel use, with BMW saying you would need about 9.7 litres per 100 kilometres on the combined cycle. It also drinks expensive 98 Ron Premium and is home to a 52 litre fuel tank. Now be warned, you'll be bored stiff if you drive it in the way that's required to get your fuel use that low. Although that being said, we haven't been overly gentle and we're getting more like 10.5 litres. 
Now, I know that we're starting the driving part of this review completely stationary, but we're doing that because there's something that I want to show you. So the zero to 100 kilometer hour time in this M2 is about 4.1 seconds, which is pretty quick, but in a world of EVs actually isn't all that impressive. There are lots of cheaper electric vehicles than this car that will really wipe the floor with it in a red light derby, but this can do things that an EV cannot. So I'm going to hit sport mode. I'm going to push this little magic button here, which activates the extra loud exhaust and I'm gonna put my foot down. Now there is not an EV on the planet that can sound or feel like this car and really that is the magic here. It's not just that it's relatively quick and really pretty impressive around corners, it's more the sensation that it creates, the feeling, the operatic exhaust note, the sound, the bangs, the clunks, it all forms this really exhilarating, exciting performance experience. And it's one of the many reasons that I really like this car. The truth is you can feel like you're having a really good time without traveling at light speed and putting your license at immediate risk of incineration. So full disclosure, we're kind of on the suburban streets of Sydney here, which really isn't the absolute best place to show you what this vehicle's capable of. So you're really gonna have to just take my word for it. I've spent a fair bit of time behind the wheel of this car now. In fact, this is the second time that I've borrowed it for this review. And I've got to say, I'm only falling more and more in love with it. But just before I start waxing lyrical, let's cover off some of the downsides. It is firm. It, this has M adaptive suspension, which is supposed to be able to jump between sort of supple and comfortable into firm and sporty. But the reality is it always feels fairly firm and sporty no matter what setting you're in. I also just spent time in the M3 Touring and somehow that car is actually more comfortable on broken city roads than this one is. It can also be a little bit jerky in its acceleration unless you're really careful with it. There's a lot of power on tap here. So unless you're gentle with the accelerator, it does have a tendency to want to sort of leap away from the lights, which is just something you have to be wary of and careful of in traffic. So if they're the downsides, let me tell you the upsides and there are plenty of them, but perhaps the biggest one is one that kind of encompasses everything all at once. And that is, this is very much the kind of car that puts a smile on your face every single time you get in it. Obviously we have a lot of vehicles come through our garage. Not all of them are the kind of cars that you kind of think up excuses to go and drive, but this is definitely one of them. For example, if we run out of milk at home, I'm only too happy to go and get it in this car and I'm only too happy to take the long way there. The other thing I like about it is it's kind of shouty, but without being too embarrassing, if you know what I mean. It's not one of those absolutely booming exhaust notes that'll turn heads everywhere you go. It just has this lovely little throaty burble that follows every little press of the accelerator. And something that I really, really like. The steering is lovely too. And as I said, the ride is probably a little too firm for city streets, but it really comes into its own when you're tracking around corners. But the other thing I really like about this car is the whole idea is a bit of fun. It's supposed to put a smile on your face. And I think the engineers in Germany have recognized that. So when you dig through the menu options, there's all sorts of little fun features like an M drift analyzer, for example, that'll score your best drift out of a four star rating. It'll also time it for length and time as well. Now, it's not something I'm gonna show you here on this public road, but it's a nifty little feature. There's also an M lap timer and all these little features that are supposed to make this car just a little bit more fun. And really that's at the core of the M2 proposition. It's the smallest and not the most powerful model in the M range, but really, I think it is the most fun. And the coolest thing about it is it's fun on suburban streets or on some winding Alpine pass. It always puts a smile on your face. Now, obviously the M2 has a fairly long list of safety features, and for that, I'll ask you to go to carsguide.com.au to read my full review. But I thought I'd show you one of my favorite little nifty tricks. I know it's been around for a while, but I'm still impressed by self-parking. Now in the M2, you hit a little button here on the center console, which saves you digging through what is really a super complicated infotainment system, and then simply roll forward. The car will tell you when it's found a spot which it's done now, almost. Now, okay. Then you select the spot you wanna park in, tell it whether it's parallel or reverse parking, it's reverse parking. Take your hands off the steering wheel and brake, and it will take care of the rest of it for you. Now, to be honest, it's not the fastest way to park. If you're a handy parker, you could probably do it a lot quicker than this. But if you're a nervous parker, it's still a fairly nifty function to have on board. 
of course, if you're presenting a car review, it does require a fair bit of excess patter to try and get through what is a fairly long and laborious process, which is still going. That said, I still think it's a handy tool. And we're in. Now, all BMWs, including this M2, are finally covered by a five-year unlimited kilometer warranty. And servicing is what the brand says is condition-based, which basically means the car will tell you what maintenance is required and when. Now, you can prepay all your servicing costs at the time of purchase, covering you for the first five years of ownership. So the M2 might not be perfect as a daily driver, but for mine, the fun far outweighs the foibles. And I still think the best M car might just be the smallest one.